Now, it might seem a little weird that I'm lumping them all together, but that is because there's a lot of overlap in what they are doing. Hi, I'm Jess from the blog SiloAndSage.com and I'm so glad you're here. Here we talk about all things home and today we are talking about homeschool curriculum and what I am doing with my 7th, 8th, and 10th graders. Now, it might seem a little weird that I'm lumping them all together, but that is because there's a lot of overlap in what they are doing because we do a lot of family style learning. If you didn't watch my previous video about um, how we do our whole family learning and how, whoa, the light just like shone in. So if you haven't checked out my previous video about how we do the whole family learning and some of the subjects that we integrate into that whole family learning um, time that we do during the day, this light is crazy. <laughs> Sorry if this looks weird. Make sure you go and check out that video because I think it will be really helpful for you in putting like a frame of reference about how we do a lot of our curriculum and a lot of our learning as a family. Because while my kids do have some individual projects and subjects and like individual things that they will be doing, uh, so there's so much of what we do that is um, done as a group, especially my seventh, eighth and 10th grader, they are gonna be doing a lot of the same things. They will just be adapting it to their levels. So I'm gonna explain um, some of the things that they're gonna be doing this year, like the, spe the specific curricula that they're using and um, the subjects that we're gonna be doing this year. Now in our homeschool, we do a lot of literature based unit studies and just literature based learning. So we learn a lot of things through books. Now this has been a struggle for me when it comes to high school because as our kids get into the high school years, it seems like everybody just wants you to shift to textbooks. And I just am not a fan of that style of learning because partly because when I was young, I felt like I just didn't learn very well from textbooks. And I know there is so much literature out there to teach our kids and my kids love to read. So it was really important to me to find ways to continue that type of learning into the middle and high school years and not just like shove a textbook in their hand and say, sorry kid, you've been learning this way your entire life and now we're gonna switch it up and now you just have to learn with this boring textbook and these worksheets because that's just not how we do things in our house. So I have been really happy over the last few years with Beautiful Feet books and that is how we have done our history but I wanted something a little bit different for the high school years. Now, I still love Beautiful Feet books and we still have a lot of their resources and I love their book lists. I think they do a really great job of curating really wonderful literature book lists, but I noticed that they don't really bring in a lot of more modern books. They tend to stick to books that are a little bit older, which I think is really great. But a couple years ago, a friend of mine told me about Guest Hollow and she was using it for science, for ninth grade science. And um, I will link it in the description below. But I found their website and we used their biology last year and it was really great. And I have just been so impressed. So they have they have so many different curriculum options, um, but what I found is their science and their um, like history is very literature based and they give you so many book options, like way more than your kid will ever really read probably in the year, like they give a lot of extra book options. So this is a really, really great method for someone who likes like the Charlotte Mason method, but maybe you don't wanna use like Ambleside or you, um, you really like just, your kids really like to read or you really like to read out loud and you're just looking for other options for your kids that aren't textbook or workbook or video based. Now, Guest Hello does give you a lot of links to videos and movies and things you can use to supplement um, and they do have like a curriculum guide that you can purchase. However, if you don't wanna purchase, you can just go and look through all of their book lists and you can kind of create your own thing based on your book, the, on their book list. So that is kind of what we're doing. I did purchase the curriculum guide um, for American history and we'll kind of be using it as like a guideline, but I don't really tend to follow any curriculum like to the letter. So it's really just kind of like helpful for me 
to see like, okay, here's kind of the order we're going to do it. And they give you, um, you know, all the different links to like a YouTube video or a movie you might want to watch because it's about, you know, the American Revolution. And it's like, you know, maybe a fictional movie, but it's like historical fiction. And so it kind of um, just gives a lot of like multi sensory I guess like learning options like different um, learning styles so we're gonna be doing a lot of reading this year <laughs> I am also incorporating a lot of the reading that he's doing for history into our language arts and I'll go into that a little bit more uh, a little bit later in the video but the language arts program that we use you can choose any book and so a lot of the reading that he does can um, kind of count for both things. So he could read a book for his history and then he could come over and he's writing something for it that also is um, part of his language arts. So we really integrate a lot of subjects together and I like to do it that way. Now I explained this in my previous um, family learning video, the family learning subjects for this year, but when I plan out our year, I plan it based on the history that my oldest is doing. So since this year in 10th grade, my oldest is doing American history, kind of going from like the Revolutionary War on. And so that's what my other kids are doing too. So a lot of the books that my oldest is doing, like some of those books, my seventh and eighth graders can do too. They can read some of those same books. And then they'll go a little bit deeper on American history when they're in high school. I'm not expecting them to learn this at the same level. They're just kind of getting like an overview because they're in seventh and eighth grade. And I'm not expecting them to go like really deep into this, but I am expecting my 10th grader to read a little bit more, dig a little deeper. There are so many books from the Guest Hollow American History that I cannot possibly go through them all. And I'm not really sure which ones we'll end up using because some of them are kind of like optional and some of them are not. So you can head over to Guest Hollow and check it out for yourself if you're interested. But how we're gonna do it is he's gonna be reading some fiction books like, you know, Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. Like this is a great historical fiction novel that can be both language arts and literature and history. I'm gonna be reading Johnny Tremaine as a family. So these are the sorts of books that are kind of like multi-purpose. They are literature and they are language arts, but they're also history. I also have just a ton of resources that we'll just be tapping into for um, history that aren't necessarily part of the Guest Hollow curriculum, but that we just happen to have. And so I'm going to be just pulling them in as we need to. Now, this series is probably my favorite history resource for high school. We used it last year. It's called A History of Us. It comes in a bunch of different books and just breaks down. Um, it's broken down by timeline. So these books are from colonies to country, 1710 to 1791 new nation 1789 to 1850 so i really like that this is a little bit more um like this is probably as close to a textbook as we get but i find these um books to be really interesting and they're really short so the so my son could read like okay this chapter is only a few pages but it has a lot of i mean i'm already to the next one so they're usually only like three, four, or five pages for, for a chapter. And they just tell a really good story and they've got, you know, some nice like art here, finding a revolutionary canon. Like they just give some good facts and they're just more interesting, I feel like. So if he needs a little bit more um, depth into one particular area or a particular topic, or like, let's say that I read something to my whole family okay as a family we read i'll show you like we've got this uh dk book the smithsonian american history of visual encyclopedia so let's say that okay so this section is on settling the west so let's say that we were to read this it's got a great timeline at the bottom got some facts and um information so let's say we read that as a family and I also really like this book, Question and Answer Encyclopedia of the USA. So we would do maybe these together, or maybe there's, you know, something that I'm reading, like a picture book. I'm reading a picture book about traveling to the West 
to my entire family, to all of my kids. And then I might have my 10th grader, I might have him go and read, you know, the four or five pages that go a little bit more in depth on that particular topic. And then we're also going to be reading other books. So there's a lot of books in the Guest Hollow um, curriculum that are also like graphic novels, which I love. Now these are, obviously they're a little bit, they're not like high school level, but they just help the history to come alive and to help our kids connect with it in a different way. So some of these, like my, when they got delivered, my eighth grader just took them. Like he took all of them and he has read pretty much all of them. So what's really great is that I know he's already read them. I don't have to like expect him to read it again and he'll actually be able to contribute really well to the conversation and probably engage in the learning um, really well from the beginning. So there's just a lot of books that are recommended, like a lot of novels, um, a lot like this one is the cartoon history of the United States. This is recommended. Um, so we're just going to be pulling from a lot of these resources. I'm really excited about it. So then I have my kids keep a journal about their learning and where they can kind of like learn how to take notes. This is just a folder organizer thing that I have for all three of my kids, my seventh, eighth, and 10th grader. And in here, I just keep different things that they'll need. Now, these are from our language arts. Um, most of them, they're from the language arts program that I'll explain to you, but it has a note-taking page and a research page. So when my oldest, especially when he is maybe doing some sort of research or doing some note taking on a particular topic. Um, he can pull out one of these pages or he can just do it in his journal. But this kind of gives a good guide of like what sorts of things he should be writing down or just kind of gives him like a framework for that note taking because that can be a hard skill, I think, especially for homeschoolers to learn. So um, this just has a bunch of different like folder pockets that my kids can keep their different, um, you know, note taking pages and the resources that they need, any printouts that we have. Um, they can keep them all together in this one and they can divide it up by subject or, you know, topic or whatever they need to do. So each of my kids, my seventh, eighth and 10th graders, they each have one of their own. This, they can personalize the front of it if they want to. This is just the page that comes with the, the folder and so they can um, personalize it and then they can just keep all their important things together so um, that it, none of it gets lost. All right now my 10th grader is going to be doing chemistry this year so we are also using guest hollow it's called chemistry in the kitchen now he knows that he does not want to go into a science field this may not be the ideal science if your child wants to go into um, a field that needs like a really robust and heavy um, science foundation. But I think this course is a really good practical application for science. And we're going to be pulling in some other resources to give him more of a like traditional chemistry experience. Um, but I think this course is really great. So it is similar to the American history where it brings in a lot of really good literature. So what I think is really awesome about this course is that it brings in some actual like novels that they can be reading about science and about like chemistry topics. So like Pandora's Lunchbox, How Processed Food Took Over the American Meal. I actually really want to read this book. First Bite, How We Learn to Eat. Napoleon's Buttons, 17 Molecules That Changed History. So for my child who really loves to read, this is gonna be really awesome. I'm really excited about this. So let's see, I have a couple more resources that we're gonna be using. So these are recommended within um, Guest Hollow's Chemistry, these books on molecules and the elements. So he's still learning, you know, periodic table, learning about the elements. This book, Stuff Matters, is recommended in that um, in the course, Exploring the Marvelous Materials That Shape Our Man-Made World. We've got um, Culinary Reactions, The Everyday Chemistry of Cooking. And then I just have some more general chemistry resources that we can pull in as we need to. So um, the Complete High School Study Guide, if you've never seen this series, this series is really fun to just have on hand as a resource for different topics everything you need to know to ace chemistry. I like that it's just fun and like looks like it's all handwritten. 
Let's see if I can show you. So there's, it's a little bit more like textbooky, but it's just a good resource to pull when you need to like learn about a specific topic. You can kind of like go to this and say, okay, here's some things about the periodic table that maybe we're not getting from some other resource. I really like this DK Smithsonian um, super simple chemistry book because it just breaks things down really, really simply. It's a great resource to have. We have the biology one also, um, really clear. I love DK books. They are some of my favorites. I also have this chemistry for kids book that, you know, um, it's a little bit younger, but I think maybe my seventh and eighth graders, they might find something to do from this. I also have the Mel Science Chemistry Kits. I actually started ordering them last year and we only did like one of them. <laughs> so I ended up saving them for this year because I realized I'd ordered the chemistry kits and we weren't really doing chemistry and anyway. So I saved them and we're gonna be doing them this year. Now they say I think ages like 10 to 16 or something. So I'm really excited for my seventh, eighth and 10th graders to do them together. I think it'll be really fun. It, you know, just brings in all different aspects of chemistry in a hands-on way. Um, and I'm really excited for them. The, the one that we did was really fun and they really, really enjoyed it. Um, and you can kind of buy kits individually or you can get them on a subscription. We did the subscription and then um, you know, we didn't end up using them. You can look down in the description for a discount code for either just one box, like one month, or you can get the entire, you can get, you can get a discount on the entire like year subscription. All right, let's talk about math. So math has been kind of challenging for me for some of my kids. So I have some kids that are really just naturally, math comes really naturally to them and some of them it does not and it has been a bit of a struggle to find a math program that works really well for them. So unfortunately we have bounced around a little bit, especially for um, one of my kids and it wasn't a great decision on my part, I have to admit, um, to bounce around and try different curriculum options because it really, I think in math in particular, when you bounce around from program to program and you do different styles of math, like some are spiral and some are mastery and some are, you know, have online courses and some don't, and it just gets a little confusing. So what I decided to do with my seventh, eighth and 10th grader this year is to try to kind of like pause some of the curriculum that we're doing and switch to doing this learn math fast system. So if you've never seen this before, I highly encourage you to go and check it out. Now we haven't started it yet, but basically the idea is that you can go through learning all of math really quickly and the pace you do it really depends on your kids, but it starts as basic as, you know, addition and subtraction. Oh, that's the second volume, volume one. Volume one is basic operations. So it really goes through the basic operations, learning, the math facts and mastering them. Okay. And it's really simple. And I think it will really help particularly for my kids who have struggled with math and it's been more challenging for them. And it will really help to solidify some of these concepts that they have kind of missed in this shuffle of switching to, you know, from one curriculum to another. Now, my kids who, like my 10th grader, math is pretty easy for him and he hasn't really like had that struggle, but I do think because of the switching of curriculums over the years that he has maybe like, maybe some concepts aren't as solidified as others. So I am gonna have my 10th grader go through this and I might have him skip the first volume because I know he is really solid in his math facts, in his basic operations. I'm gonna start with volume three, which is pre-algebra and then it goes to algebra one. It goes to, oh no, it goes pre-algebra, geometry, basic geometry, algebra one. Then it goes to applications of algebra and then high school geometry. So he has already done algebra, but I think this will really help to like make sure he has a full and complete understanding of it all um, before we move into the actual like geometry. So our plan is to do this and then to move on to Denison math. So last year, my, tenth, my now 10th grader in ninth grade, he did algebra 
through Masterbooks. And he did the Masterbooks Academy where they have online video lessons and then, um, you know, you have like a regular algebra workbook. And that worked really well for him. He did great with that. I knew as he was going through it that it was not going to work for my next child who is not quite as mathy. His brain is very artistic and he just does not have as much of a like math minded um, brain as my oldest does. So I knew I needed to find something different for him. So that is where I found Denison Algebra, which has pre-algebra, algebra, geometry, like it's not just algebra, it's just called Denison Algebra. But I found that through Jamie at Simply Living It, and I am really excited to go into that. Now, because my oldest, even though he's very math-minded, he is not planning to go into a career that is very mathy. So I know he's not planning on needing something very math-oriented in his future. Now, that could change, and so I want him to have a good foundation for math because he could always go into an advanced math later if he wants to, but I really, really wanted to make sure that we weren't missing something big. So my seventh and eighth graders are gonna go through this as well. I expect that it's gonna take them a little bit longer than my oldest. He's gonna probably gonna actually go through this really quickly, um, and then we'll move on to Denison geometry for him and pre-algebra, for my seventh and eighth graders. I think they're both going to be doing um, the pre-algebra. So I'm not really worried about them um, finishing this in any specific timeline or, you know, really quickly. Like if it takes them a good chunk of the first semester, like, I don't know. I don't really know how long it's going to take them, um, but I'm not really worried about that either. When it comes to language arts, my 7th, 8th, and 10th graders are all going to be using the same program, and that is the Read, Think, Write program that I created for them to do their language arts. And I created this because I found that most language arts programs don't give kids a lot of choice in what they're reading. It basically says, you read this book and respond to it in this exact way. And I just honestly don't think that that is the right way to go about teaching kids in middle and high school language arts and language arts concepts. I think they need to have a lot of choice for them to um, take ownership over their learning, to have some independence in their learning, and to also like just enjoy it. Like if you're constantly telling your kids, this is what you need to read in order to be successful, in order to graduate, in order to learn, I just think we're doing our kids a disservice. So Read, Think, Write is all about giving kids independence and choice and helping them to um, just learn how to respond to literature, but giving them options in how they respond to it. So they're still learning those big writing concepts like how to write um, a good paragraph, how to write a five paragraph essay, how to write a research paper, how to um, you know write good good sentences, how to communicate well with others, and how to demonstrate that you've comprehended the things that you've read. But it gives them a lot of choice in the process. So a lot of the things that I have in this, um, you know, folder system that I showed you before, these are part of the Read, Think, Write program. You know, it has different story elements, literary devices, types of nonfiction. It has different checklists for essays and sentences and editing, parts of a paragraph. It has pages for learning vocabulary. <laughs> it has pages for vocabulary words and writing a five paragraph essay, um, the note taking and research pages I showed you before. It just kind of gives them some scaffolding, some guidance in learning how to do these things. And it will scale up as they go. So obviously my seventh grader is not gonna be writing at the same level as my 10th grader, but they're using some similar resources. So my 10th grader is also gonna be reading a lot more books and some higher level, higher level literature compared to my seventh and eighth grader. So how the Read, Think, Write program works is your child or you picks books to read and these books like I said before could be part of like a history program or the chemistry like all of those books they carry over and they also kind of count as language arts and then they get to pick these different um, cards activity cards for how they want to respond to that literature and there are cards for fiction and nonfiction. So there are cards for helping them to think critically or to analyze literature, to analyze different parts of literature, like different story elements like plot and character and setting, um, responding to the literature. Um, let me give you a good example. 
like literary analysis. Write a letter recommending this book to your local library or not recommending it. Format your letter like a business letter and make sure that your tone is respectful and professional. Be sure to give supporting evidence as to why your library should or should not have this book on the shelves. Or a shorter activity, write a review of the book, share a summary that doesn't include any big spoilers, and your opinion about it. So these are just a couple of the activities for um, the fiction writing, and there are long writing activities, short writing activities, and some projects. So it gives your kids ways to respond to reading and literature that aren't worksheets and that aren't just writing. So some of the activities might be really appealing to a child who doesn't love to write, but loves to create something with their hands, or who loves to create movies, or to write a speech, or, you know, it just gives different ideas of how to respond to literature that isn't just a worksheet. It isn't just a research paper, but it does give them guidance in writing those research papers, which can be really helpful if your child is going to be going into any higher education, or even just as they go into their career field, they may have to write like a report for their boss, or they might write have to they might have to be writing letters for something. There are so many things that your kids will need to know about writing and communicating well. So there are like biography, write an essay report about the person's life. And it gives an example template of what your child can do when they're writing that report. Um, historical nonfiction, write a report about what you learned, introduce the event and give a summary about what happened. And then it gives a template of how to write a report about an event that they read about in their reading. So the nonfiction and the fiction, um, these prompts can be used just as discussion. So you might come across a prompt that says, what's your position on this topic? Did your opinion or thoughts around this topic change after reading about it? This might be something that your child doesn't need to write about, but you're gonna have a conversation about it instead. So a lot of these activity cards can be used for um, just a simple journal entry in their you know, history journal. It could be something that is done as a group, as your family, you meet together and you talk about it together. If your child is reading a book with a friend or as a book club, these questions will be really great for them to um, kind of analyze the book together and to talk about it together as, um, as a group. So some of these might be great for you and your child to talk about one-on-one, -on -one, for them to do individually, or um, to do a project. Let me see if I can find um, a project one. Here's a historical nonfiction. Make a timeline that displays the events within the text, draw or print out pictures to include. Another project, create a brochure related to your topic. Some ideas might include a travel brochure, a map of an area, an identification guide, etc. So these are activities that can be done for multiple, you know, multiple ages, multiple abilities, and they can be adapted to your child's ability level. So my seventh grader, obviously the things that he's doing are gonna be different from my 10th grader. My 10th grader, he is learning learning to write longer, you know, reports and essays. And we want him to be prepared to do those things if he chooses to go to college, but also just because being able to communicate well is incredibly important. So we have, um, oh, here it is. So this book is the main resource that I recommend in Read, Think, Write, but it's also just the resource that we're going to be using for um, my kids for for the grammar concepts, especially my 10th grader, Writers Inc. Um, this says a student handbook for college and career readiness, but I just love, it's really simple, laid out very well. Like you can open up writing a summary. It tells you how to do it. Creating a current events report. Understanding poetic terms. Understanding uh, writing a narrative. It gives really clear and simple instructions on how to tackle different writing topics and different um, styles of writing and different um, techniques of writing and even just different grammar, like parts of grammar. Now my seventh grader is not quite as proficient in writing yet as my eighth and my 10th graders are because this really is a uh, 
honestly not something he really enjoys writing. So I am also going to be pulling in pieces of my reading response journal that I have. Now this is just basically like a guided way to respond to things that you're reading. So like this page, my prediction, give your best guess as to what's going to happen later in the story. They're really simple writing prompts. Um, create a movie poster. My best advice, give some advice to a character in the story. If you could be anyone in the story, who would you choose to be and why? So he's going to do some of these also because some of the higher level writing, he's just not ready for that yet. And I really want to work on improving his writing skills. So we're going to start with this and then we will move into more of the Read, Think, Write program. And some of that though, like the projects and the discussion questions will be a lot easier for him because it doesn't have that writing element. And so I take that bit of struggle out of it and let him do the higher level thinking as a project or you know as just discussion versus the writing and so i'm keeping his writing a little bit more um simple until i've seen his um, skills improve and i feel like he's ready for maybe um some longer writing or to maybe like just add to it a little bit. So that's the beauty of, about homeschooling is that we get to adapt to where our kids are and what their abilities are. So even if my kids are doing similar or the same things, they're not all doing it at the same level because they're doing it at the level of their own ability and what works for them and what they need. Now the other things that my seventh, eighth and 10th graders are going to be doing are they are going to be kind of doing some like elective courses on their own through Udemy. Now I discovered last year that our local library has access to these courses on Udemy. So we have access to like a huge library of courses for free through our library. So your library may have something similar. Um, and I am really excited there. I mean, there's so many different courses they could do like Spanish and different language. There's like tons of language courses, art history, guitar, piano, photography, watercolor, uh, web design. I mean, there's so many options. So I'm going to have them each choose one and try it out. So my seventh grader has also been learning Mandarin and he's going to be continuing that. He has been doing that primarily first through Duolingo and then we got him a lot of books that he's um, learning to practice um, writing characters. And um, there are actually some courses on Udemy that I'm excited for him to continue. I am thinking that my 10th grader is going to be doing Spanish this year um, through Udemy, but I'm not 100% sure on that. He hasn't fully decided if that's the, um, the language that he wants to do yet. Um, and then my eighth grader loves art and I think he's going to be trying some of the art classes on Udemy this year. I'm also having my 10th grader go through the book, How Do We Know the Bible is True, as kind of like an apologetics um, course. And this will be something that he can tie in to the Read, Think, Write activity cards too. And so he can be using this as one of his books for his um, literature too. So now this is kind of where we start like this may not be where we end up at the end of the year like all these things that i have these ideas and these plans like they may shift and change throughout the year but i'm okay with that i am okay with just knowing like this is our guide of where we're going and as my kids are learning and changing like we may shift a little bit. If you haven't seen my other video in this curriculum series for this year, make sure you check out the link in the description to find all of the videos from this, um, from our back to school, what we're doing this year for curriculum. I have our morning work binder video, I have our group learning video, and I have still to come the video about my first and my fifth grader and what they are doing this year. So if you're watching this video right when it comes out, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that video. And if you're watching it after this video comes out, like down the road, make sure you head into the description to find a link to this playlist and to find all of our curriculum videos. So I will see you soon for another video. And in the meantime, keep cultivating your home. Bye friends.